Hey everybody, it's Bruno and welcome to MB. Click on the subscribe button below here and you'll never miss an episode. And also you can follow us on LinkedIn and on Facebook on Megapix Media. Enjoy the episode. All right, hey everybody, it's uh, Bruno on MB where not everything has to be serious. So I have Melissa Agnes straight from the Big Apple, New York City. I think it starts, and you can you can say no or not because you're the expert, um, or you you know you've thought about this way longer than I have. But ever since I started listening to your stuff and listening to you and your concepts, it starts right from when you're recruiting somebody. And I'm not saying that because. I'm not saying that because that's what my past was or that's, you know, I own a firm and all that kind of stuff. But you said something really interesting a long time ago, and I just reminded myself, issue is not a crisis. And I think people who make issues into crises are probably not qualified in the first place to deal with it. Or they said they were, and now they're like, oh, crap. You know, yeah. uh, you know, the cake isn't rising. What do I do? And that becomes a crisis. And you're like, well, it doesn't affect, like you said, the material. You don't have to call the big honcho. It's not going to change anything. You're just not qualified to do that. And that really changed a lot of my <clears throat> my questioning uh, and my coaching and training. Is that, is it an issue? Are you able to deal with issues? Because listen, you're a software developer. You're a police officer or something like that. Um, is it really a crisis or you just can't deal with that issue? But, and here's the thing, and you're, you're spot on, and this is really, it's normal. In my experience, so many people, leaders, professionals, no matter however you want to position it, overreact to issues and underreact to crisis because they get, um, we saw it throughout COVID, they get so fearful of the high volatility and they don't know what tomorrow brings. So they just stand still and they don't lead. And that's, that's massive problem, right? But both of these things and everything in between is learnable skill. And that's mm -hmm. my whole point is that's what I've always brought to the table was I don't want to, I always looked at it as, so my competitors, I don't believe in competition in this way. I think there's, there's enough for everybody, but um, my competition would say and do say, you know, when our clients have crisis, that's when we meet our quota. That's when we want to come in. My lens has always been when my clients have crisis, I want them to have identified it without me prior to it escalating the crisis. I want them to have worked as a team to overcome that issue and to strengthen their team and their, their brand equity as a result of overcoming that issue. And then I want them to call me after so that we can debrief and go even further with their readiness. This allows me to sleep at night. This allows me to take vacations and to serve other clients. So at the start of COVID, as an example, my clients were crisis ready. So when COVID hit the, the US and Canada, so North America, I had the luxury and the honor because my clients, we had spent a month prior to it hitting because we saw it coming, getting them crisis ready for it. So when it hit, they had gone through the emotional toll of it, right? All the fear and the all of that, they had already been through that, which is a massive advantage, massive advantage. And they had their contingency plans and strategies in place. So they were good. I was there as a support to them, but they were good, which gave me the opportunity to work with hospitals and nurses and doctors and law enforcement and support them on the front line the best that I could. And Otherwise, it would have been helping my clients manage the crisis, dealing with the emotions of managing the crisis, not giving them the best advantage and opportunity that they could have, and missing out on the ability to serve our heroes on the front line, which was, which meant everything to me to be able to do. You know, um, I really believe that um, after listening to you, either you're ready for anything uh, or you can prepare for almost everything. It's a process, like you said, you can deal with a lot of the issues. Then when the real crisis, yeah, when the when the real crisis is hit, like real defined crisis, then you kind of take a deep breath, you assign people or, you know, your emotions to uh, the tasks, and then you deal with the real crisis. One of the things, I'm sorry, I'm just going to throw this out. I'm so sick and tired of people asking or saying, you know, it's a black swan effect because that's a book, right? And I bet you dollar to donuts, 
right? That, you know, I'll, I'll bet you a million dollars to one donut that no, none of those people have ever even read the book. And I'll tell you why. It's a really tough book to get through. It's uh, a great book. It's, it's a, a great phenomenal book. book. But it's a tough book. And people say it's a black swan, it's a black swan. I think they read the introduction and they say it because realistically, this has happened before. So like not at this, I mean, this extreme shutting down the economy, that's, they're dealing, yeah, anyways, that's my comment. But the fact that you've had influenza or stuff like that, viruses, we've dealt with that before. The extreme amount that they're doing, that's kind of crazy. So that being said, how do you feel I'm not going to tell you how I feel. How do you feel about everybody now as an expert? Like these, sorry, I'm going to go on a rant. Uh, these business coaches and these uh, career coaches and life coaches saying, you know what you need to do during COVID? Bullshit. You've never been through it. Unless you went through the Spanish flu and you're 112 years old, how can you tell me what to do? Right? Unless you've gone through an exercise like you. And I'm, I'm kind of promoting you because unless you go through, deal with the issues, go to the crisis, really. So how do you feel about all these experts right now popping up? Um, it was frustrating for me at the start of that because to your point, they're not qualified and they, they haven't, they were, I mean, they were pivoting their business. That makes sense from business strategy. They pivoted their business. Um, they needed to, to survive. They found a way to hopefully provide value, but it goes back to the reason that the Institute exists and the reason that my book exists, which is, People were doing it and are doing it wrong. And as a result of that, it has dire consequences on those organizations, the people they serve, the economy and the environment. Right. So it just stems back to it's me taking my work really seriously, which is why the Institute does exist. We are catering to one of our, our markets is exactly those people. So people who are there providing their their clients with crisis management services, um, we want to help them do better work. We're raising the bar in what status quo needs to be, and we want to bring them there so that they can do better work, get more work, do better work, serve more, and ultimately meet our goal of creating a crisis-ready world. So that's my, that's my frustration and my fix. As soon as they started shutting down economies back and forth, and, you know, uh, I can't say you're a leader because you are Canadian, right? Uh, are you dual? You're dual, right? I'm, I'm a Canadian with a green card. There you go. So all I'm saying, I was going to say your leader, you know, uh, Donald and uh, Pierre Elliott's son, what's his name, Justin, uh, you know, they start shutting down the economy. I'm telling you, the first thing I thought about was like, oh, shit, my family's going to be in trouble. Uh, you know, maybe my business. And then I said, hey. and then the second person I thought about was you. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be so frustrating for somebody like you. That's kind of, you know, you get it. You got it. You got a plan for it. it doesn't mean it's going to be any more comfortable. Right. But you already know what's going to happen in the roller coaster. But I'm going to tell you, it, it, you know, these experts um, and you hit it right on. My biggest thing is like even the top, top experts. And I don't want to throw people's names out then because it'll seem like I'm politically aligned, which I don't really care one way or another. They don't even know. So I think they're creating a bigger crisis. More, it, It's not even an issue. It's a crisis. Some people are just like really believing that Santa Claus will never come again. And it's kind of like, you don't even know what's happening. You don't really know. And they're throwing things out, making people panic, shutting down businesses, wearing masks, don't wear masks. Who knows what's going on? And I really believe that, I mean, plugging you again, if they would have even spoken to people like you, uh, instead of just relying on their technical expertise and, and, and theses, uh, maybe we'd be here, but I think we'd be less panicked. So I thought of you, right? There's a whole lot that we, thank you. There's a whole lot that we could have, should have done differently as a, as a, as a global community. Um, and that's, you know, I wasn't supposed to launch the Institute until later in 2020. And I launched it ahead of time. I launched it before being ready, which I tend to do um, at the start of 2020, because I just wanted to serve. I just wanted to be there. We have the crisis ready community, which is a part of the crisis ready Institute. And that's just, that's just a place for anybody who has any role within any aspect of crisis readiness. We've got law enforcement, chiefs of police, to public information officers, to officers, to heads of large corporations, to consultants, to professors teaching this stuff. It's a place, it's a space to get the support and the resources and 
be able to tap into a diverse collective of very, very diverse experts globally and say, hey, we're dealing with this. What have you guys seen? And come outside of your own filter bubble and your own lens to get insights from others and to not make mistakes that you don't have to make and gain the support and the celebration. Um, so anyways, that's kind of long-winded, but the Crisis Ready community was one of the things that we got to serve also through. Crisis Ready uh, Institute, it, is it in Canada? Because uh, uh, we're in Canada right now. I spend a lot of time in the U.S. when the border opens up, but uh, in Canada, like, what do you do? Do you join? Do you go to, like, the 7-Eleven, get a card? How, how does this work? Uh, the Crisis Ready community is a global network. Um, you okay. go to crisisreadycommunity.com. It, you can also go to the Christ Ready Institute.com's website um, and learn about it and join and join us. We have monthly mastermind sessions. We do a lot of great things. We're amping it up in 2021. Um, and as and it really is a global community. My market has always been my market. My audience has always been global. I've always had this global reach um, mm-hmm. just organically, which was always really privileged to have. Um, and so the, the Institute is very global. So we're, we put the link under here, right? Okay. Go click it, go, and I think if people follow anything that I do, uh, they all, always know every 33rd comment in one of my videos, I go, as my friend Melissa, who's a crisis management expert, would say, you. if you do this, you, know, you do that. So I, I quote you quite a bit because to me, it's it's pretty lather, rinse, repeat, uh, and your definition is dead on between issues and, and, um, and, and real crises. Because, you know, listen, I'm Italian, right? And when you grow up in an Italian family, second generation, everything is a crisis, right? So it's like, you know, you didn't take your shoes off, you know, that, oh my God, I'm going to die, you know, you know, so, and, and then, you know, after listening to you, I said, my God, I've wasted my youth thinking this was just an issue, ma, you know? Yeah, so, you had fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Well, you know what? That's pretty much all the time we have for this episode today. Thank you for tuning in with us. And you know what? Make sure you subscribe to our Megapix media channel. So you you will never miss an episode. And also you can follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook, Instagram. Uh, We have content almost every day. So thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you guys soon.